Good afternoon to you, Mark out of HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Monday, Veterans Day 2019, November 11th. Good to have you with me. First of all, several people that support what we do and several of my good friends have served or are serving in the military, and we certainly appreciate your service. Uh, a couple of those folks have been really helpful with me over the years with the Weather Balloon Project, and that has been really awesome. So today is your day, and we appreciate what you have done and are continuing to do so happy veterans day is it veterans or veterans anyway we appreciate it let's take a look at what's happening in the tropics we'll start today with a look at the sea surface temperature anomalies this was a few days ago 11 7 so it's about four days old but you get the general idea that the atlantic main development region is warm the western atlantic caribbean and the gulf much above normal generally speaking and then yeah, kind of warm-ish in the Nina regions of the Pacific. Um, the Climate Prediction Center saying that we are not in an El Nino, but the atmosphere and the ocean, etc., seem to want to indicate that we kind of are in a very weak El Nino-type pattern. So we can just call it Nino-ish, but it's not overwhelming. It's certainly, I mean, you can see the data right in front of you here. It's not like these anomalies are over here, you know, four three, four, five degrees, there's none of that. These are just some light colored oranges through here indicating slightly warmer than normal sea surface temperatures across the equatorial Pacific. But this area through here is definitely above the long-term average, as is the case off of the coast of North America there. And that could be interesting going forward, not only in the rest of the winter coming up, but for the next few days. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a moment. All right, looking at the vorticity signature, as I talk about and have talked about recently, most of the energy this time of year is going to be focused up here in the subtropics, as you can see with these different frontal boundaries, but there is <clears throat> a little bit more energy trying to get together down in the deep tropics, both in the southeast Pacific as well as in the Atlantic, and that could lead to some interesting things coming up that we don't normally Normalarily, that's a combination of normally and ordinarily. Normalarily, my word. Uh, we wouldn't normally see in the month of November, especially this late. I mean, after all, we're getting into the second third of November now. So real quick look at the uh, satellite animation here. Very well-defined frontal boundary. And then a huge area of high pressure over the eastern Atlantic. Uh, general troughiness over the western Atlantic. Strong upper level winds across the main development region, as you'd expect this time of year. But underneath all that, there is some energy out here that we'll have to watch and see what happens with it. Uh, this is the boundary separating the coldest air of the season, the fall season. Very cold air now pouring out of Canada. Going to be some below zero temperatures up in the upper Midwest. Lake effect snows, winter storm type weather for the Great Lakes, and then freezing temperatures all the way down to portions of the Gulf Coast. Maybe some overrunning, weak storm system type precip. Nothing major, not a giant blockbuster winter storm. There will be disruptions, there will be impacts, and it'll affect a lot of people, but as long as common sense prevails, it's nothing that we can't overcome when we're talking about lower 48 winter type weather coming up. And I'll look at that again in more detail in a moment. Now, as I alluded to, maybe some interesting things coming up in the tropics. I saw this tweet this morning when I was perusing through Twitter, and uh, Michael Ventress, Dr. Ventress there from the, uh, the weather group, or the weather company, the weather group is the television side, um, the weather company, IBM, etc., up in, I guess he's in Boston, and uh, he was talking about uh, this, and we've heard this before, remember back several months ago, CCKW, the convectively coupled Kelvin wave. Again, this is kind of like Red Bull from the tropics or a fertilizer truck. Uh, trying to make sense of what you're looking at here. Let's don't even worry about it today. Let's just focus on the text. Uh, basically, the tropics are going to get a little bit of a boost. That's what this is alluding to. And he's talking about kind of what I said with, with my made up word there that we are outside of the normal bounds of the hurricane season. I mean, we're still in hurricane season, but the most active part has come and gone. However, the models are hinting at low pressure over the main development region in about 8 to 10 days, um, probably driven by 
this convectively coupled Kelvin wave. It's, it's again, it's kind of like this um, wave in the atmosphere, this period in the atmosphere that goes by a period of time where more moisture, a more favorable overall environment, less shear, and it's not very long lasting. Whereas the Madden Julian oscillation can be longer lasting depending on how it's doing. These are all about atmospheric physics and other things with waves in the atmosphere, and you could just have an entire afternoon dedicated to trying to explain all of this. But for you and me, the layman, just look at the paragraph and take out of this that, okay, maybe, and that's what the bottom line with all this says, maybe something to watch in the coming days. Will it be an impact event? More likely not. But it is something to keep an eye on that maybe we add another name storm to the pile, maybe two more name storms. If we go over here and look what uh, Yakov was talking about as well, and I've known Yakov for several years, probably going back to 2009, 2010, somewhere around there. He's in uh, Israel, and he is a meteorologist, and I like when he retweets stuff, but sometimes Yakov actually does the tweeting, and uh, he posts some very good stuff as well. And he is talking about that the Ensemble Prediction System and the GFS Ensemble Forecast System, uh, I think that's what GEFS stands for, both of these ensemble groups here hinting at an unusual late season subtropical or maybe a tropical cyclone forming out in the main development region. And you can see, um, well, we have this one here, which we'll talk about in a moment, but the ECMWF uh, overall the EPS, the Ensemble Prediction System, predicting maybe something out here uh, coming out of the MDR and then another system off of the southeast coast. These are unrelated, but that convectively coupled Kelvin wave coming through, uh, again, it's like a shot of Red Bull or a fertilizer truck that leaves the, uh, the area behind it nice and fertile, okay? And it has, you know, there's a period of time where the atmosphere can sort of take advantage of that. Um, that's the Euro. This is the INSEP uh, ensemble members for uh, all cyclones in the northern hemisphere. And both of them pointing out two genesis areas, one in the main development region, the other over here off the southeast coast. And uh, furthering this, you can see the different look to it with some of the vorticity. Uh, kind of disorganized here from the Euro, but what are we looking at? Well, here are the islands over here, the Lesser Antilles, and here is some energy trying to gather, and this is about a week out. Now, remember, this is from last night, the 0Z run from last night. We'll take a look at what the 12Z run showed in just a moment. The GFS, or I'm sorry, back to uh, the Euro, I was ahead of myself, in 10 days, and yes, it's 10 days out, the Euro does go from this to this and creating quite, I mean, look, that looks like a friggin' hurricane. And again, what's what? Well, there's Puerto Rico, U.S. British Virgin Islands in here. There's Guadalupe right there. So here are the Lesser Antilles. And so, hmm, you know, 10 days from now, even if it doesn't come to this full fruition, it's not like this is just completely, you know, out to lunch. You know, we go to the evidence. Again, science and evidence to back up what the modeling shows. We know it's getting into the latter days of the hurricane season. We're down to the last few weeks. But we look at what Dr. Ventress uh, showed and, and what Yakov was talking about here, that the ensemble prediction systems, the overall ensembles for all of these models here that we're talking about are picking up on this. So we'll see. Maybe something interesting coming up. So let's take a look at it from the GFS perspective. This is the 12Z run today. Um, hopefully you know your geography, but just in case, here's the Mid-Atlantic, Southeast, Florida, etc. Central America, South America, there's the islands over there. Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, there's Cuba. Dominican Republic down there as well. So now you got your bearings. This is the front coming down. I guess we could call it an Arctic front. It's Arctic air coming in, very cold. Uh, that clears the coast, and we're out to about 48 hours, um, cold in the southeast, cold elsewhere, pretty much east of the Rockies. And notice a couple of things that go on here. We're now out to 96 hours. 
An interesting surface low starts to develop here off the southeast coast. And then over here, east of the islands, we do have energy in the vorticity fields trying to consolidate. Going out to day five, uh, this starts to get strung out, so we'll see. Definitely extra tropical mid latitude kind of stuff. But this, you know, hey, it's just east of the islands there. That could be an interesting look to things five days out. We'll just go out to day six. And at day six, uh, this off the southeast coast starts to look interesting. Maybe a subtropical storm. Waters are warm enough there still. Definitely above 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 26 Celsius or so. This still doesn't look too impressive. There might be some other energy off the chart over here that we'll have to watch. Um, just going on out to day seven for what it's worth. Yeah, we'll see. GFS not too enthusiastic with anything. Yeah, you know, maybe a little bit of an impulse down here that crossed through the islands. So now let's take a look at its counterpart, the euro. The euro is 24 hour increments. Here's the initial. 24 hours out, you can really, really see the front there. Change this to blue. There's the frontal boundary coming through. A little bit of energy hanging out out here somewhere. We'll have to watch and see as I progress through these frames. 48 hours out, 72. And there's the energy right there trying to get together east of the islands. And then finally at 96 hours, that impulse coming up out of the gulf somewhere. Um, it, again, non-tropical in nature. This is going to settle in off the southeast coast. There's the system east of the islands, 120 hours. Uh, rather impressive trying to bundle this energy here, trying to bundle energy east of the islands, that convectively coupled Kelvin wave moving through this region. And look, even a little activity in the southeast Pacific. Uh, it does not want to be left out. So that's day five. At day six, pretty good storm system off the southeast coast. Finally at day seven, wow. Euro indicating, I mean, that would be a name storm probably uh, at day seven. And then out here east of the uh, Carolinas, pretty good storm system that would turn up the coast, maybe some beach erosion problems. We're a few days past full moon at this point because full moon is pretty much now. But something to watch, definitely. And you know what? It goes out to eight days, so just what the heck, right? So day eight, <laughs> wow, more shenanigans. You got this out here to watch, and then day eight, it pops up something else in the Gulf. Let's just quit <laughs> right there, shall we? But going back, I mean, the Euro is supposed to be a good model, right? They call it King Euro. It's just been weird this year, the way the global models have handled the genesis of different storms. But yeah, day five and day six and day seven, we shall see. Um, it won't be long if this starts to manifest itself more and more in the models. We might need another 24 hours. We might see the National Hurricane Center outline it on their tropical weather outlook. We'll see. All right, a real quick glance at lower 48 weather. There's not much more than, that I can add that you don't already know. The, the map here really paints the picture for you pretty well. All of this coloring in here is winter weather, all the way down to the deep south. Um, you know, it's it had to come. We had a nice uh, summer, extended summer at that. Now it's time to pay the piper, as they say, and it's going to be chilly and downright cold. Uh, winter storm issues in the usual areas up here in interior New England. No big coastal storms coming up. Um, I, you know, if you want to know what's happening for your local area outside of reading Twitter and what people are prognosticating here and there, everybody's an expert some of them better than others. I just want to give you a bit of advice. You just go to weather.gov, you see it right there, and then stick in your zip code. For example, mine is 28405, that's the Wilmington area, and you get everything you want to know right here. No ads, no subjectivity, it's all objective, and it's nice here, 68 degrees. When I'm done with the update, it's gonna be time to go outside. Uh, and then it goes into the toilet from there. But you know, no matter where you live, this gives you a look ahead at what's coming, um, and then you can read the discussions. You know, if you really want to get into it, there you go. So it's all there, and it's all written by the men and women that work at your local National Weather Service office. You can also click on the map. Hey, look, it's an old map. It cached it. That's great. That's from the seventh. 
How about that? Thank you, Firefox. Now watch what happens if you refresh it. Whoa, there we go. Oh, wow, that changed. But, you know, you say, oh, I live in upstate New York. What's happening? Well, just click on the map. And there you go. It's already cold, 30 degrees. This is out of Buffalo. Nice radar and different web pages, home pages for different regions, what we call the weather forecast offices, will have different layouts. This has satellite and radar, etc. And is it et it's et cetera, but whatever. Um, I try to make sure I speak accurately when possible. And you can read the winter storm warnings and other things like that. So, you know, just trying to be helpful here. Part of my job, hurricane focused mainly, but also other weather. And in this case, you know, instead of going on every little county and who's going to have school closings and whatever, the broad brush, brush stroke look at this is winter weather in the east, not so bad out west, not much happening. But the pattern looks to change. I wanted to show you this. This is really cool, literally. A nice tool from Tropical Tidbits, uh, Levi Cowan, who I believe has his PhD now. Uh, I have to look and see if that's official, but it's going to be, if not already, real soon we're going to referring, be referring to him as Dr. Cowan. Um, so another nice tool from Levi here. And this shows the air temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, believe it or not. And these are different contours. And I love this because this is such a nice way to understand where the cold is. And here's your cold, duh, you know. And, well, this is below freezing, put it that way. And, you know, your definition of cold, 55 degrees might be cold. I guess it can be if the wind is blowing. But this is the GFS, and this is the next, you know, couple of weeks. This is really cool literally so watch as the cold air drains deeper and deeper and so we're you know afternoon evening morning afternoon or morning see so by wednesday morning most of the area east of the rockies is below freezing all the way down to new orleans the you know the gulf coast uh, per se and verbatim whatever i-10 corridor um, but that modifies over time. See, we go out to 96 hours, and so by Friday morning, it's moderated. No more below freezing temperatures at the Gulf Coast, the coastal Carolinas, etc. Um, you know, the deep south there dipping into Tennessee and points north, sure. Another 24 hours out, yeah, it's still kind of hanging on, but by the time you get out to day six, you really start to moderate things here in the east. And I'm drawing it with blue, but you know, kind of misleading. But you see how this works? This is so neat. Then you start to see colder air draining out west because the pattern looks like it's going to flip. And as we get to uh, day seven, and that's as far out as we will look, uh, a week out, a much different pattern than what we're going to have midweek, um, where a good two thirds of the country will be below freezing by Wednesday. A week from now, only different areas, the Rockies and the Northeast, most of the country will be above freezing if this verifies. So we'll be using this more and more. I think this is a cool tool. All right, so interesting things in the tropics. Believe it or not, in November, we'll keep an eye on that. No big storm systems coming up in terms of major, major impacts for the lower 48 for the time being, but we'll see. Uh, you know, maybe some interesting coastal developments that we have to keep an eye on in the southeast and perhaps some impact for you folks in the islands. Remember, you don't have to have a direct hit from something to have impacts, and we will address that over the coming days. All righty? All righty. Well, that is it for me. As always, I appreciate you tuning in. I am Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.